One of the things you will rarely hear preached, the new birth. John 3 verse 3 to 7 Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. It is unfortunate that the very foundation of the Christian faith is forsaken by many preachers. Meanwhile, there is no possibility of roofing a house that has no foundation. Whatever we teach believers before their new birth is like attempting to climb a tree from its leaves. The foundation of every matter is very important. Even the Bible affirms that the righteous can do nothing if their foundation be destroyed. The refusal of our preachers to teach about the new birth is like destroying the foundation of the Christian faith. No wonder we have people coming to church just for what they can receive from God. Many people are in church but have never truly encountered Jesus or surrendered their all to him. Most of these people were deceived, so to say. Preachers will entice many people to come to church by offering financial blessings and miraculous healings. Yes, God can bless you with these things. However, this should not be the sole reason to come to church or to become a Christian. Jesus should be the main focus, and getting closer to God and all these other blessings may be added. Any preacher who only speaks on how to receive blessings and never speaks about Jesus and how to obtain salvation should not be trusted. We will get blessed. We will receive our healing and God will change our financial status if we truly serve him. But we cannot put the cart before the horse. The true message of the kingdom begins with the new birth. You must be born again. Jesus first talked about the new birth in John 3, and the account is really interesting. It has an important message to relay to our current day preachers. John 3 verse 3 to 7 Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, Verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. Nicodemus was a Pharisee and a teacher of the law, he knew how the Pharisees detested Jesus, but he knew without a doubt that Jesus Christ came from God. So he came to Jesus by night. First, Nicodemus acknowledged the divinity of Jesus and he eulogized him as one sent from heaven. 
He also acknowledged that no one can do the miracles Jesus did if he was not sent by God. For many of us, this is a very pleasant feedback from such a man who was respected as a teacher of the law. But when Jesus would respond to Nicodemus' appraisal, he said, You must be born again, otherwise you will not see the kingdom of God. Jesus was not carried away by the fact that Nicodemus was a teacher of the law. Neither was he carried away by Nicodemus' evaluation of him. He pointed out to him that the new birth is the prerequisite to entering the kingdom of God. There are many false preachers out in the world right now who will attempt to convince you that there are many ways to enter into the kingdom of God. This is false, and these people are not of God, but of the world. They are known as false preachers, and they are being influenced by the Antichrist spirit which is already in the world. If we look at John 3 verse 5, Jesus clearly states that there is only one way. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Many times the Bible emphasizes and repeats that there is only one way to heaven, only one way to the kingdom of God, and that is through Jesus Christ. Acts 4 verse 12 and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Many churches are failing to tell their congregation the truth because they want to be accepted by the world. John 14 verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Unfortunately, preachers have mellowed down on preaching about the new birth. Some call it an old school message. Well, no matter how lightly the message of the new birth is esteemed, therein lies the wisdom of God to save sinners. Romans 1 verse 16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The gospel remains the power of God to salvation for everyone that believes, regardless of how many people disdain it. If you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. You must be born of water and of the Spirit to enter into God's kingdom. If you are born once, you have a physical life. But if you are born twice, you have eternal life. The new birth therefore refers to being born by the Spirit of God after our physical birth through our faith in the finished work of Christ for our redemption. The new birth is the regeneration of the human spirit. In the new birth, God works from within the believer by cleansing of his or her sins by his spirit. And such a believer is birthed by the same spirit into the household of God. The new birth takes place the moment we repent of our sins and confess them to the Lord, accepting Him as our personal Lord and Saviour. John 1 verse 12 and 13 says, But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. In the new birth, 
we are born of God and we become sons by believing in Jesus Christ. We are adopted into the family of God through our faith in Christ. Our sins are cleansed by the blood of Jesus and we are justified by faith. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 17 therefore says that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Your old life is gone and you are a new person in Christ through the new birth. Your old life is forgiven and you become the righteousness of God by faith. However, the new birth cannot be your reality if you do not repent from your sins. Believe and confess Jesus as the Lord and Savior. Romans 10 verse 9 and 10 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The commercial gospel has taken the place of the gospel of the cross. Now, instead of preaching Christ to humanity, people say, come to our church and you are going to have more money and wealth. God can make you rich, but that shouldn't be the basis of your relationship with him. The gospel of Christ should not be replaced with the gospel of commercial faith. The devil is taking God from people in exchange for money and they embrace it with joy. Those that have turned themselves to preachers of commercial faith rather than preachers of righteousness have been possessed by the seducing spirits which are to make people accept the wrong doctrines. Unfortunately, the body of Christ is becoming more prosperity conscious, forgetting that the highest level of blessedness is to make heaven. You need to be born again by accepting Jesus as your Savior today. Remember that if you are born again, the second death will not have power over you.